Shalom everyone, grace and peace be unto you. Welcome back to my channel. It's a marvelous day. This is a day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and I will be glad in it. This is a day to celebrate God's goodness, his mercies and his grace, his ways. Oh my God, it's just past finding out. I'm excited. I'm excited to be here today sharing with you I want to share a testimony. I feel it is testimony time. I've been teaching for a while and, uh, you know, it is just impressed upon my spirit that I really need to share this testimony. Um, it's, it's an amazing testimony. I've shared it in part before. Some of you may not have heard, but I'm out again to share um because of what the lord is doing and i want you to take a look at this yeah this is a shofar i'm going to be talking about this in this testimony i'm going to ask you to to share this video with your contact I'm going to ask you to share this video with um, on your social media um, platform. I'm asking you to share this um, video for the very fact that um, it is a means of spreading the word of God. All right. This is what I'm called to do. And I'm asking you, please help me to do it. Help me to do this. The purpose of this is to share the word of God. I'm not asking you for your money. All I'm asking you is for helping me to share the word of God. And you do so by subscribing to this channel. You do so by um, listening the video, um, liking the video, and uh, sharing, subscribe, and share with your contacts. And also, please touch the notification bell. So each time I come on, um, you will be notified and you will be blessed by the word. I continue to receive um, testimonies from different persons as to the blessing they are receiving from these teachings. I continue to get a lot of feedback and uh, May the name of Hashem be praised forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. I am Apostle Claudia Morgan, and it is indeed a wonderful privilege to be with you today again. And so, the journey of faith is an amazing one. And it gets even better, right? It gets more amazing when you are able to see the visible hand of God steering, guiding, and just giving direction to your path, right? And uh, it is really just mind-blowing to know the way he speaks. Um, yes. It is mind-blowing. All right, so I, I mentioned that I want to be sharing this testimony. And uh, some of you may have heard it in part before, but as the Lord progressively continued to unveil what he spoke to me a while back, it became necessary to, 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 to celebrate, to celebrate his goodness, because when he speaks, it's like when the Lord gives you a, a, a dream or a vision or an, an experience, an encounter, we don't always get the fullness of it up front, right? It's like an onion being peeled back, right? And uh, it happens progressively, and there is always more to what the Lord is saying. And today I'm a testimony of that, because there is always more to what he is saying. And I really just want to be in it for the more. So it was actually in 2016, it was actually um, July 16th, 2016, that um, I had this encounter. We were coming out of a week of revival meetings. And I remember one of the speakers spoke on the 
the same the book of the law is found and it tells the story of a time in ancient Israel when his covenanted people no longer functioned by his instructions and the book of the law was also missing so they actually had nothing to guide them they were just basically doing their own thing right I've never heard that before in all my life going to church I never heard that before because I was just a New Testament reader right and I remember um, maybe about two nights after that sermon I went to bed and while I slept I had a supernatural encounter in the wee hour of the morning an extremely bright light flooded my room but the light was more directed to my face, right? And it, it, the, the light basically just hit me right here. And I felt my skin was on fire and it pulled my spirit from my body and I was transported to a place that was not in this life. As I was transported, I heard the voice of a man and that voice rolls like thunder and the voice says to me blow we the trumpet of god in zion it was extremely loud immediately i heard the blowing of the shofar right so the shofar this is a shofar and uh, i heard the blowing of the shofar and the shofar is what is called trumpet in our English Bible. It went off like a siren. And the sounds varied. It was just so unique, right? There were just different levels of sounds and the length also. And it was just very, very, very distinct. And uh, my body, my flesh began giving way right um do you know the word of god says that flesh cannot glory in the presence of the lord so my flesh was literally giving way and i began to shake i was shaking and to the point that i i don't even know how i i stay on the bed but the impact of it woke my husband and he i know he was trying to pull me out of what was happening because he didn't realize I was actually having a, a, a supernatural encounter. Of course, he couldn't wake me out of it because the Lord was dealing with me and he wasn't done with me yet. And so um, while I was there shaking, I saw the hand, I, I, I saw a hand, the palm just came out of the heavens and it rested on me right here. And in that moment, in that moment, in, in that quick moment, the shaking slowly subsided and my spirit re-entered my body with a mighty jolt, right? I was like dead. I was totally disjointed. I was helpless to myself. I was useless. And in that moment, I realized I had an encounter which was not normal. It was not a normal encounter. And I know my husband was asking at this time, what happened? What happened? What is it? What is it? And the best way I could respond to that was um, to describe the experience that the Apostle Paul had on the Damascus Road when he went out just persecuting the believers in Messiah and that light shone out of heaven and it floored him. It floored him and he had an encounter with the Messiah. For me, it was more like that kind of experience. And so I, I remember just sliding off the bed or rolling off basically and I went on the floor and I went flat on the floor on my belly. And all I could say was, Lord, I don't know what this is about. But I repent before you of 
every evil, of every sin that I have done in this body. And whatever you want me to do, Lord, I'm willing to do. Wherever you want me to go, Lord, I'm willing to go. I totally surrender my all to you without any form of reservation. I didn't have the strength to ball out because my flesh was done. And then I got up and I took up my Bible to read from Joel chapter 2 because I know that Joel chapter 2 spoke about the blowing of the shofar. And I realized I couldn't even figure out one letter on the page because I, I basically had no sight. I, I couldn't see any, I couldn't read any at all. And so I asked my husband to Google Joel chapter 2 and he Googled and read it for me. This encounter turns my life around, right? It was a turning point in my life as a believer in the Messiah. I mean, I've been going to church all my life, but this one encounter turned me around. It's like I have no control over myself and suddenly my regular world began falling apart and uh, he took me through the shifting and the shaking and uh, it was like huge scales. <laughs> were removed from my eyes, both physically and spiritually. And the Spirit of the Lord began teaching me things that I never knew before. The Spirit of the Lord began teaching me things that mainstream Christianity does not teach. The Spirit of the Lord began um, teaching me things that I have to unlearn. I have to be going through a process of unlearning and I'm still going through that process. I'm still going through that process as the Spirit of the Lord continues to deal with me. You know, when you get in contact with God, you can never be the same again. And so I remember that for many weeks, I was afraid to go back to sleep. As the night was coming, fear came on me because I never want to go through that experience again. I never want to have that encounter again. And then I also realized that once God gets your attention, that's enough. And how you respond to his call is another thing, right? Um, and what began happening though, is that he began to, you know, as he removed fears and he calms me, he began to give me visions and dreams and these, you know, began to follow into a particular pattern and the, 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 the spirit of the Lord was just manifesting in powerful ways. And so the word of God also, the Bible is no longer an ordinary book, right? But the Bible now becomes the living word of God that is life transforming and real. It's not a story book. It's not a fairy tale book. It's a true story. It's a true book. It's a true history book. It's a true book that tells the story of the creator God, the God of Israel, and how he has chosen a people who he called his own. And he called these people to be separated from the nations of the world, to live by his covenant as they come into covenant love and uh, to usher the Messiah into the world who is the hope of our glory. And so, I mean, it's like, it, it, it is no real because I never understand, yes, I'm a believer, but who is this Jesus? Who is he? I had I really just believe, but I never understood that there was just so much more to learn as I am now learning that he is the Jewish Messiah and I have Jewish, Jewishness in me. I'm a believer in the Messiah of Israel. You know, the Apostle Paul says that if you are seed of Abraham, if you believe in the Messiah, you are seed of Abraham. I think that is powerful. 
right and so the word of god just becomes so alive within my heart and within my spirit okay but that started six years ago right and so after six years the lord is still unfolding the mystery of that experience i had that night right he didn't only want me to hear the blowing of the shofar he actually gave me he actually sent me a shofar wow this is amazing he actually sent this to me by a gift it is only God who could have done something like this. And he is telling me that there is more and there is more and there is more when you begin to walk in obedience to his calling upon your life. Sometimes, I have to be honest, it's not easy. It's not an easy walk. Sometimes it is difficult and it can be very lonely. It has been lonely times lonely journey but guess what there is this constant reminder that he would always remind me of that hand that came and rested here and the shaking subsided when i had the vision he ever so often reminds me i am with you and i understood what that means i um, with you so I want to talk a bit about the shofar right now right it is very symbolic the shofar it was a very religious and symbolic instrument that was used in the time of Israel and it is still being used today it is still being blown today it is still being used today to usher in the presence of the Lord and so quickly I just want to highlight a few a few of the significant significance of the shofar it speaks of the coronation of a king in the time of israel it it stirs the conscience right it was a reminder of the revelation of mount sinai and when you read the, the scripture you remember you know the the, the the blowing the blasting and everything and when when israel heard they trembled because they couldn't stand before the presence of the holy god it is the exhortation to the prophet of Israel. And so we know each time Israel broke covenant with God, they would come out and some of them would blow the shofar, but it was used as an exhortation, the prophets, right? To, to bring back Israel to where they are supposed to be. It gives also the reminder of the temple's destruction and a very familiar one that you all know, when, Ab when, Mo when Abraham went up, to offer Isaac as a sacrifice, and he saw the ram in the ticket, right? Very significant also. And so it warned people of their sin. It warned people of breaking God's com covenants and commandments, and it, it speaks of the impending judgment as a result. We also know it is, um, it is used for a war cry, right? And in times of victory, I mean, there would be great chauffeur blown. You remember when Joshua and his men went into Jericho and they walk around the walls of Jericho, but on the final day, there was a chauffeur blowing and the walls of Jericho came down. I want you to know that today in our time, Whatever those walls of Jericho are, when we begin to blow, they're going to come down because the sound, the sound that comes from this shofar is going to dismantle the kingdom of darkness. And I'm standing here to be a part of that great move to dismantle the kingdom of darkness. Ezekiel chapter 22 verse 3 says, I looked for a man. I looked for someone among them who would build up the wall and stand before me in the gap on behalf of the land so I would not have to destroy it. But I found no one. That was a prophecy the Lord gave to Ezekiel. I want to be that woman to stand. And I'm not afraid to stand because God has called me to this. This is the mandate he has given me. This is the call he has given me 
to blow the trumpet of God in Zion, to bring back people, right, to righteousness, to bring back people to the source of restoration and wholeness. So we can all experience the fullness of the Lord. This is my mandate. And I want to be that woman to stand as I commit to the Lord a few years back. That whatever you want me to do, I will do. Whatever you want me to say, I will say. And wherever you want me to go, Lord, I am going to go. We have a mandate and the mandate is to expose the work of darkness by shining the light of God's word, God's holy Torah. So people come to know that when people say the word, the, the, the God's commandments are done away with, we are able to stand in boldness and without fear to say it is not true because the Messiah of Israel, Yeshua, the Messiah of Israel, he didn't teach that. Right? And so we have a right to walk in obedience to the word of God. We have a right to stand and to be light for those who are in darkness. Another thing that we will learn is that, um, you know, that Israel is the mother of the church. And the church does not replace Israel. Israel is the mother of the church, but what is happening, the church is continuing to move away from its Jewishness more and more and more. The church is being stripped of what the church should be. If you will go back into the book of Acts, in the time of the apostles, they were Jewish apostles who were anointed by the Holy Spirit, who walked and lived like their Messiah lived to tear down the kingdom of darkness. But what is happening in our time, we, the power, people are after the power, but at the same time, the lives does not match up with the call that is that should be on their lives, right? And so, yes, Israel is the mother of the church, and the church does not replace Israel. Israel has its place in God's history, and we will see the fullness of that in time, right? So... Israel is God's prophetic plan, is in God's prophetic plan and God's timing. And as we prepare for the coming of the Messiah, we also need to remember, we must, that's where we must look. Look at what is happening to that nation as a whole. Because Yeshua did say, I am not going to come back. We're waiting on his return. But he said, I will not come back until you say, blessed is he who come in the name of the Lord. Until you come to know me. Until you come to acknowledge me as your Messiah. So while we are waiting and we're anxious and many want to go to heaven and that's it. You know, there is more for you to do. There is more for you to do because you are also called to shine forth the light of God's glory to those who are have not yet known him. But how are you going to do it? You have to, to do it by what is written in the scripture. Right? One of the things that I think we have missed a lot is the fact in understanding what it means to be grafted into the commonwealth of Israel. Who we are. Right? As the body of Messiah, who are you? What is your identity? We are living in a time when, of course, the body of Messiah needs to return. It needs to return to the source of truth. Need, needs to return to the foundation. It needs to return. And this return means to repent, to repent and to make teshuva, to repent and to acknowledge God as the creator of the universe who has established his covenant and we too are his covenanted people people of god there is much to get done but as i share with you today i want to stand and i am willing to stand in the gap to be that woman to go forth to teach truth and the word of righteousness you know, the Apostle Paul spoke much about the time when Yeshua will return. And he says that he talks about the trump of God shall sound. Yes, we are anticipating that time. And the dead in Christ shall rise. 
and those who are alive and remain will be caught up together with the Lord, right, at the sound of the shofar, right? And so, yeah, there, there is a lot to learn, and I'm asking you to, to help me to spread this, right? There's a lot of teaching I want to be doing on these things and to see the benefit that is there for each of us. People of God, this is real, and God is real, and he is still calling men and women who will stand. He is still searching for men and women who will stand in the gap because he, he didn't want to destroy, that's what he said, the land. And even today, he doesn't want to bring destruction, but he wants to bring restoration and healing and deliverance to you and to all people. To hear the blowing of the shofar is to hear the sound of heaven. When I learn to blow this properly, I will be coming out and I will be blowing so you can hear. God bless you. Thanks for listening. And please remember to share, to subscribe, and to be a blessing to others. Thank you.